and welcome to ADHD Friendly. I'm Patty Blinderman. I'm an ADHD coach, mom of four, and creator of the ADHD Friendly membership community. I invite you to check it out, ADHDfriendly.com, where everything we do is designed to close that gap between what you intend to do and getting it done. So we're making that doing part easier. Check us out. All right. We are Becca. Episode one two zero one twenty. No, I know. And I'm calling this so every tenth episode, I focus on personal owners manuals, something to do with personal owners manuals. So I'm calling this a zero episode because I was trying to figure out like how do I call it, how do I reference it. Yeah. So zero is sparkly to me because it every episode that ends in a zero will be a tenth episode. So it makes it. I, just, I, I look for things that that or sticky in my brain and make it easier yeah. for me to connect to and remember them. So I'm just sharing that. So we're calling this a zero episode focused on palms. I'm going to be talking about a list of palm tools. This Ooh. came from a subscriber asked if I would do this. So Ooh. I know if you ever have something that, that you'd like more information on related to ADHD, something I've talked about in the past, you want more clarification, you have a question. Um, I would love to have a segment where I'm just answering uh, questions. questions from people who or listeners or watchers. But first, as always, I'm going to start with a celebration. And then I have a tip before I get into a list of, I'm going to kind of structure the list of palm tools in a way that I'm hoping again, makes it kind of clear and sparkly. Yeah. But let's start with a celebration. First, I have to start with, woo -woo. oh my gosh, you guys, welcome a hundred new subscribers in a little less than a month. Yes. I don't, I never know. Like, I don't know what I'm doing that that it's move the needle so much. This is like such a huge, huge win. So I'm so excited because it's really sparkly for me to think that something I'm sharing might resonate or might help you in some way to, you know, kind of always say like level that playing field out or maybe even tilt it a little bit so that we're thriving with ADHD. So welcome. And, um, just want to celebrate that. Thank so, you. <laughs> so yeah, so, so grateful that anyone would take a moment to listen to what we're sharing. All right. So starting with my celebration, besides that <laughs> is for my 24 in 2024 list, one of the things that I added there, and I think I mentioned th this to you already, was it struck me over the holidays, how the word awful, like, oh my gosh, this weather is awful. And being full of awe, awful are two very different things. And it's the way that they're spelled is, mm -hmm. is that it's different. So I just found right. that very sparkly, the play on words. So I decided to make a 24 and 2024 list intention of making an awful book. Mm -hmm. So a book literally full of awe, not awful, like extremely bad, unpleasant and ugly, awful, like full of awe, awe-inspiring, full of wonder. Aww. I know I just felt very sparkly. Yeah, so like it. it it also gives my brain something to look for throughout the year. So I'm looking for those things that just fill me up with that. <gasps> That's amazing. It could be a sunrise or a sunset or snow, um, yeah. a baby, anything. So I made it, I, I started. So this is my Oh my, my gosh, how it is cute. so simple, right? This is like literally just a half inch binder oh, that I yeah. bought in bulk at Costco. I found this picture of a baby that just made me feel like, oh, that's like a wonder. That's a baby yeah. look like, amazing. <laughs> and then um, I love um, orcas. So this was a picture from the Alaskan cruise I took with my husband where we saw orcas swimming so cool. and I just cried yeah. watching them. And so this picture brings me right back to that. And I just wrote all full. So again, if you're listening to this, I invite you to check out the YouTube channel where you can see my images. And I'm hey, this is another win for me that I let go of. I'm writing at a slight angle. I have very ADHD. I call it ADHD font. My <laughs> handwriting is very ADHD where I just can't, I can't slow down enough to really form letters beautifully. Never been able to do that. Even as a teacher, I remember when I went to college, I thought I'm going to learn how to write like a teacher. <laughs> Yeah, sure. So the very first two page spread of my awful book is our snowfall here in Chicago, yeah. where it was just stunning. You can see the sunrise here. And this again was just printed on my, my trusty Epson EcoTank printer on regular paper, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Just put it in my little sheet protectors to make it sparkly to flip through. This one, 
is my kitchen window and this is ice on the inside that is crazy because <laughs> it was you know yeah. 14 below it was cold and uh that was a thing and i was just like literally stood there going this is inside the window <laughs> this is not outside this is inside the window so i have my first two page spread in my awful book and just wanted to share that celebration and that sparkly idea yeah. um because i know language is something that those of us with adhd we're really sensitive to you. And I found that kind of a fun way to take awful and flip it to something that's full of awe with all A-W-E-F-U-L. Yes. All right. So that's my celebration. On to my tip. So this is something I'm just going to read a story. My tip comes from, um, there was a Hulu show in and of itself. Have you heard of this? I have not. It's by Derek. I'm going to apologize to everybody that knows him. And Derek, if you ever listen to this, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher your last name. <laughs> um, Derek, Del Guadio, D-E-L-G-U-A-D-I-O. So sorry. Um, but it's an amazing show. It's just a single episode, one, one show. Yeah. But he talks about, um, I'm going to call this the ship's log story. Ooh. So I'm going to read um, what I captured from this episode. So he said, on every ship is a book. This book is called a ship's log. It was a sailor's job to write down everything that happened on a journey inside the log. It was an important part of navigation because sailors used the sun and the stars to navigate. They would determine their location and write the coordinates down inside the log. From time to time, clouds would fill the sky and it would be impossible for them to determine where they were. But they still needed to make an entry into the log. So on these days, the sailors were forced to imagine where they were and they had to write down, write that down, sorry. They had to write down what they imagined and they relied heavily on the previous entries to keep them on course. Eventually the clouds would part and they would find the stars again and get back on track and they would arrive at their destination. Oh my gosh. So he said the end result was that it told, an, the, this the ship's log, that it told an honest story of the journey that had taken place, but it was composed entirely of information that was both real and imagined. I shared this story, number one, because it was very sparkly when I, I literally remember it was one of those like pause and write right, down what yeah. I was hearing. Cause I was like, what? <laughs> um, to me, this is a personal owner's manual. A ship's log is just like a personal owner's manual. So it's why I wanted to bring this into this zero episode. Um, if you think about what you capture in your personal owner's manual, it's literally those things that help you to navigate. It's what works for you. It's the steps, you know, if you follow them, you can start and finish a task with more ease, but it's also, what are your goals? What are your dreams? What is it that you're trying to achieve? Where are you trying to get from where you are to where you strive to be? So it's also that imagined, it's that seeing your future self place that you can capture in your personal owner's manual. Hello friends, I'm ADHD friendly girl. Are you overwhelmed, unmotivated, run down? Do you stop before you start? The answer to your challenges can be found at ADHD Friendly. ADHD Friendly is where we, where we make the doing easier. Join ADHD Friendly today and start tilting the playing field in favor of your ADHD brain and start thriving. ADHDfriendly.com, where intention meets action. So that transitions me from this ADHD Friendly little tip of you know, how to see a ship's log as what would you capture to help you navigate with more ease to how to use a personal owner's manual and what might you put in it? So I know this is a very abstract concept. Mm -hmm. So for more information on this, I invite you um, to check out episode 11, which is a very early days episode where I first introduced the concept of personal owner's manuals. And I talked about um, what they what they are and how I came around to creating them. And then episode 60 is another episode because that was our zero episode back in episode 60. Oh my God. Where I think we started these at, with episode 50. Yeah. But episode 60, I talk about um, specifically something I think that will help if you're just starting out with your palms. So check out either episode. It's kind of a bummer that we did episode 11 because we didn't have a zero episode at that time, but episode <laughs> 11 and episode 60. Um, but this was requested from a YouTube follower uh, who goes by Hair Debbie. And Hair Debbie wanted to know if I would share a list of 
palm tools, tools to explore when starting a personal owner's manual, which I was like, oh yeah, yes. yeah, I can absolutely do that. <laughs> so when you think about starting a palm, two places I'm going to encourage you to explore to begin. Number one of those episodes, 11 and 60. Number two is check out ADHDfriendly.com. If you um, want a free mini palm, you can sign up for that. No charge whatsoever. You just register with your email and you will get a mini palm delivered to you and you can start with something. You know, mm -hmm. I always say like, we don't want to start with like a blank page, a blank screen, mm -hmm. a blank slate. We want to start with something tangible that begins that process. So those are two ways that I can support you to start your personal owner's manual. The other is to decide what works for you in terms of, are you going to do a physical or a digital? Um, you may end up with a version of both, but I encourage people when you're just starting, pick one, whether you're going to have a notebook or a binder, or you're going to have like a open Google doc, uh, you know, yeah. something that you're going to capture, um, decide where you're going to start. And it might be where you just start putting some tips that support your future self, things that you know work for you. Maybe a list of rewards. That's one of the uh, the things I always encourage people to start with because it's noticing if you have to incentivize something, what is it that you could use? And if we just have to think of those things in the moment, we'll resist it. And then we just move on to something else. Yeah. Where if you're like, oh, I have a list of things that I could use. Let me go look and see what I have on there. Yeah. It just makes it easier to make those decisions, support yourself to do it. Um. And then I also, I also support or encourage people to create a list of strengths with evidence of them so that you can push back. We have, we all have that, um, more than we like experience with negative self-talk. So if the, the imposter syndrome, that little negative self-talk comes in, it's that thing that you can go to and push back with evidence that, mm, wait a minute, I might be struggling right now, but I don't always do this or I have evidence that I've worked through this before. So I'm going to talk about um, some different structures for your personal owner's manual. And then I'm going to get into specific types with some, a list of tools. So I'm going to get to you here, Debbie, but I want to, I want to start by um, exploring some structures for it. So if just starting a notebook feels like it's just too open-ended. It doesn't really have like a sense of where am I going with this? I put a piece of paper in it or I open a Google doc and then what? Yeah. Um, or maybe you're resisting adding things to it. Cause it's like, how will I find it later? If it's just like a running list of things. Yeah. So I like to think of, um, one playful option. This came from a client of mine in one of my, my personal owners manual groups who decided they were making a menu a palm menu. Huge. Now, if you guys have been listening to this, if you are a follower of the podcast, you know, I love me a menu, love thinking about things in terms of menus, but an actual palm structured like a menu. I love that. So I like to think of this as if you've ever eaten a like cheesecake factory, Ooh. it's like a book, right? Have I. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I really love the cheesecake factory. <laughs> so. <laughs> Little emphasis there. I like it, but it's like a book, it's their menu, huge. right? Yeah. And so if you think about the sections of a menu, mm -hmm. appetizers, appetizers are maybe like those things that make it easier for you to start those yes. small bits, those easy go-to strategies, main dishes might be the main need of the things that, you know, work for you. Desserts can be your rewards. Nice. You can look at all the different ways people structure menus and play with that if that speaks to you. Another menu that I thought could be sparkly to play around with in terms of structuring your personal owner's manual could be like a streaming menu like Ooh. Netflix or Ooh. Amazon Prime. Yeah. And the way I, I would use that is the category, you know, kind of headings. So yeah. like Netflix, they have like trending now. So I feel like the things that are sparkly for you right now, yeah. and it, it can literally capture like, what you notice in some patterns over time, if you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot I was so into that. And over time it might be like, oh, I'm, I forgot I was into that a few years ago. It yeah. came back around and you can start to notice your patterns or they have the category. Would you like to continue? Mm -hmm. So it's like, literally like maybe like a way to prompt yourself. Are these things I still enjoy? Cause right. sometimes we just continue doing things because they're part of a routine, but we don't really pause to ask ourselves, is this still Working. firing me up and yeah. giving me energy or is it now draining me or getting in the way of other things I think I would enjoy? Um, another category is gems for you. So again, this could be like a reward menu, menu. things, things that incentivize you. 
they also have categories like collections um, or just the way, you know, if you just go through a Netflix or Amazon Prime or whatever streaming mm -hmm. service you use, look at the categories and see what's sparkly, if that would help to structure your personal owner's manual, but connecting to something that you identify with. So it's keeping it interesting. The other idea is like a book where you have like chapters. Maybe you're defining the chapters of your personal owner's manual or like a, a CD or an album Ooh. where it's like divided by like songs. So maybe you pick songs that resonate with you and maybe like could have categories around them. So like my example is Blank Space by Taylor Swift could be like a, you know, like a place for you to like doodle or just, you know, kind of get your thoughts out of your head and journal or phenomenal, phenomenal by Eminem for like a success journal where mm -hmm. you're capturing those, those little things that you feel particularly a sense of achievement for yourself. And you want to have those in one spot. So again, just play with it, keep it interesting. There's no right or wrong way. Um, like I always say, there's, there's no perfect time to start your palm. And if there was, it was when you were 10. Um, <laughs> so just start and then continue adding to it. The more that's in there, the more valuable it will be for you because it's all the things that work for you. Yeah. It's not somebody else's manual. It's yours. It's a personal owner's manual. All right. So here, Debbie, this is for you. This is the list of tools for a palm. And I'm going to structure this by some different types of palms that you might be considering starting. So I'm going to start with the personal, okay. the P in mm -hmm. personal owner's manual. And so, like I said, you might start with a list of strengths, a success journal, a rewards menu. And then the other thing I love to include is an ICNUP menu, I-C-N-U-P. So that's the, the strategies to get started. I-C-N-U-P being interest, challenge, novelty, urgency, and sometimes passion. Um, the next type of palm that you might be interested in exploring. So if doing one for yourself doesn't have a sparkle, or maybe you already have one for yourself and you're thinking about another, another to start might be for a family, a family palm, a farm. <laughs> so this could include like a family mission statement. It might have the structure for family meetings that you guys are following. So you kind of have that agenda and you just open it up and you follow it each week or month, however you structure family meetings. It might even have a log for your family meetings to kind of capture what was decided. I don't know about everybody out there listening to this, but I can tell you in our family meetings, more times than not, we forgot what was decided if, if it, we didn't write it down. Like we would literally come back and be like, what did we talk about? I don't know. What did we decide? What was the rule we set in place? Whose chores did we say it was, you know, whatever it was, we completely forget. Um, something else in a family palm could be um, capturing those family traditions. Ooh. So like, what do you do for the holidays or what are your birthday party traditions or um, grandparents day or whatever it is? Yeah. And then maybe even capturing that chores list. What is it that each person's responsible for? What's the schedule? Are mm -hmm. there allowances? Whatever it is, capturing those details for your family in one place so that everybody knows where it is and you have a way to go back and update it so mm -hmm. that it's really clear. And it, especially in families impacted by ADHD, it's a game changer. So a family owner's manual. All right, next, maybe you don't have kids. Maybe you're, you're living with your spouse or your partner or significant other. So maybe a couple's palm Ooh. or a roommate's palm, you know, whatever your, your living situation is. And this yeah. could have for couples, partners, particularly about me pages. So understanding how you each interact, maybe understanding what your go-to strategy is when you get overwhelmed, what that looks like so that you understand what is going on or what yeah. might be the, the patterns for each other. Um, understanding what to do. You know, I always call it like that ice in case of emergency. It's like when, when you see, like I always say, if I go really, really quiet, I'm typically like not in a good space. Yeah. So you're shutting down. Again. Yeah. It's, it's like, when I get stressed, I kind of go inward and get quiet. Some people when they get stressed, go outward and are very loud. And, yeah. and, um, it, it, it's just a way to capture those things that you know about yourself so that your partner has a chance to know that as well. Um, you might also include maybe an about us page, like what you know about each other, oh. like what it is that you both bring that brings out the best in each of you or, you know, whatever it is, but it may be an about us page could be something sparkly to include in that. A list of trips or a list of experiences mm -hmm. that you want to have together. Maybe, um, again, going back to that chores list, maybe a, a way to clarify the division so you have that balance in the partnership. Yeah. So it might be kind of like... I call it a division of tasks where it might be, you know, my own example is I struggle to 
you know, with like the laundry and like, that's like not something that my husband struggles with. And so, you know, kind of like leaning into what one of you maybe don't mind or even look forward to and somebody else doesn't say so you're, you know, kind of like acknowledging like, oh, I don't mind doing that. If you don't mind doing this, like he likes to cook. I don't mind cleaning up. I don't want to clean up, but I'd much rather clean up than cook. cook. Right. So just, you know, kind of capturing that. Um, and then maybe considering taking the via character trait survey, um, via character.org. It's no charge. You get a list of your 24 character strengths um, in order from your signature strengths down to your lesser mm-hmm. strengths. But having a sense of what each of yours are can be really a game changer mm-hmm. because then you kind of know like what their love language is and how yeah. they're navigating the world through those. Okay. So that's a partner or a couple's pump. If you have kids, like I said, best time to start a pump is when you're 10. Like, honestly, I don't think. And, and here, like I've been teaching this forever. Did I start my kid? No. So, <laughs> <laughs> like to would like to be able to say, yeah, I did all of this. Check all these boxes. Look at me go. But that's okay yeah. because, you know, I'm navigating from where I am now and I'm supporting you to consider if this would be something that you would start with your kids. Now, I did end up with like certain versions of these over the years, but not this intentional. Like I would love to support parents to think about starting a a POM for each of your kids where you're literally collecting evidence of their strengths with them. And this is probably going to be with them initially, um, helping them to to capture successes. This could be like a nighttime ritual where you're like, okay, what is there anything from today that you want to write in your success journal? You want mom or dad to write for you. Um, Maybe a rewards menu, capturing those things that that do incentivize when they need incentives. You can even, um, this is something that I did work on with my kids where it'd be like, okay, I want you to list the things that would be motivating to you. And then I'll let you know, like if it costs money, when that's appropriate or when yeah. it's just, you know, you can pick one of the, like you can have 30 minutes on, you know, a video game mm-hmm. or you can watch TV or whatever, or time. Ironically, they always wanted time with me or their dad and and so it was like okay and like for me like my best gift ever is always like you can talk about things that interest you that don't interest me I can't give that often that's a good but but again I'm always like put it on the list and I'll let you know if it's something I can do or we have like a list of movies that we want to watch together and certain ones they want me to watch and I don't have a lot of interest in so I'd be like I can do that today if you do this I am willing to watch that with you today and so yeah you know get creative with that but a list of rewards um and then just again connecting those strengths so it's not just even if you have them take there's a child version of the via again via character Ooh, I, know that. I think it's 10 and up um 10 to 17 i think is the the youth survey and to get to give them a sense of their strengths but then look actively for evidence of it i would say a list of strengths is just a bunch of words if you don't have evidence to connect it so Absolutely. if their strength is um appreciation of beauty and excellence. What does that mean? Mm-hmm. So then literally being like, hey, like I really noticed like you were collecting, you were picking flowers from the garden. You made the most beautiful arrangements. So you take a picture of it and you add it to their successes. Mm-hmm. So it's literally away from or to their strengths. They have that visual, they have that written evidence that they can go back and see how does this show up? What does that mean for me? So that's a a child or a student palm. I say that because maybe a teacher wants to do this with students, like help them to collect, you know, their own um, students to make this for themselves. It could be like a class project for each kid to do their own. Yeah. Sparkly, right? Um, Next is if you're a business owner, which if you own a business, there is a 75% chance that you meet the criteria for having ADHD research shows, whether or not you're diagnosed. Um, And a lot of times it may not even be getting in the way because you're doing something that you're interested in. But if you're a business owner, having a business owner's manual or a bomb is one of my favorite things. I have had this Mm -hmm. since day one for my business. And I I like to list like entrepreneurial strengths and challenges. So like knowing what I'm really good with and what do I need to look to outsource Mm -hmm. or get support with. Um, And then another tool could be an outsourcing list. This can be in home too. It's like, okay, neither one of us or I live by myself and I don't want to do these things. Where could I outsource? And maybe it's Mm -hmm. bartering. Maybe if you can afford to pay for it, but exploring how do you get those things off your plate if at all possible. Another bomb tool could be, um, again, success journal. Yeah. A resources list. Like literally, if you have tech challenges, who are your tech support people you could turn to or your resources there? Who are the people that can help you with bookkeeping? Who are the people that can help you with admin tasks? starting a list of those resources so that when you need them, 
because that's typically when you're feeling pressure and stress, you have a list to turn to instead of trying to call it up in your brain. That's going to take effort to make it easier to get the help you need. And then one of my favorite tools in my um, my business owner's manual is evidence of growth. Ooh. And I call it because I need to see, especially when I was starting my business, it was such a slow growth. I even have it right now. You can't see it. I'm pointing. I have a little thermometer showing the, the growth of the podcast. Mm-hmm. And I have no doubt, I have no business doing a podcast. I have 600 followers, which I'm so stinking grateful for, but I've been doing this for more than two years now, mm-hmm. every single week. And that's really low for most people that do this, this consistently, I think it's pretty amazing and I'm really excited by it. So it's all perspective, but I keep a little, um, thermometer where I color it in and kind of mark, and I can kind of see patterns. I never can figure out why the numbers tend to go, Go you know, kind of like stay where they are (laughs) for really long periods of time. And then they go up. I I don't know, but it is fun and it's sparkly just to see it. So evidence of growth, whatever that looks like, it could be income growth. It could be number of clients. It could be, um, seeing how you went from a a little, you know, kind of side hustle to a full-time business or hiring employees or whatever that looks like for you. So evidence of growth. All right. Two more types of palms with lists. So maybe a health palm is something to consider. So this is literally specifically focused only on health and it could be for individual or for an entire family, Mm -hmm. but things, tools to consider for a palm focused on your health could be Maybe just a list of all of those prescriptions that you're taking. So you have it handy whenever you need it. Um, An appointment log. So like literally a way to keep up with who you saw, when, for what, what their recommendations, like a place to take notes or a place to ask questions. So like you're preparing before you go in, what did I want to make sure I find out? So that in the moment when they're like, Hey, any questions? My, my default is no, (laughs) no, because I can't think of it in the moment, but I wrote it down. I'm like, yeah, I do actually. And I can look down and I can remember what I wanted to ask. Mm -hmm. So having just like a way to support yourself with that. Another thing you might want to consider is maybe a sleep log. A lot of us struggle with getting good restorative sleep consistently. I think um, research shows between 67 and 70% of us with ADHD have difficulty getting good restorative sleep as adults. That's a large percentage of us. So a sleep log might be able to help you help show you track what time you're going to bed, track what time you're getting up and track your mood your energy, your irritability, you know, all of those things that can be impacted by sleep. Um, Something else to consider might be a exercise menu or an exercise tracker, something, you know, that helps you remember the things you like to do when you're bored of what you were doing, but you need to do something, having a list of things that are go-to things that work for you can help. And then maybe just something to help connect you with if nutrition is something that you're focusing on. What are those healthier snacks that you know you do enjoy so that you have a list to go to and you can remind yourself when you're shopping like am i out of this do i need more of this i don't know about you but my brain does that not at all so i'll be walking on the store and i'm like oh pringles oh ice cream and i'm not at all thinking about the things that i actually really do enjoy if i bought them because i can't remember what they were and i'll resist trying to think about it in the moment because there's so many other things pulling my attention so having a menu of snacks that are nutritious that you enjoy could help all right. And finally, a financial palm, a palm. A a so maybe this is where you keep um, maybe the steps for balancing your checking account each month or um, a list of the procedure you have for going through your statements each month or a list of what expenses you have your or subscriptions. yeah, a list of all your active subscriptions or um, maybe just listing your financial goals and a way to track how you're doing towards them. But thinking about those tools that would support you financially so that again, it's sparkly and it gives you a way in that feels less heavy and, and resistant. Yeah. Yeah. So it's helping you. Um, and then additional things that are just kind of sparkly tools that I have in my palm that I'm going to throw out just as like bonus list of tools Mm -hmm. could be maybe a list of books that you intend to read or that are, you know, people have recommended. So you have a, a growing list. I know one of the big reasons I was able to read so much last year is because I kept adding books to my list that were very sparkly that people recommended. And I got better and better at noticing what books were recommended by people who tended to like books I liked, which I'd read a book they recommend. I was like, oh, I really like that. What else are they recommending? Or maybe a list of TV shows to watch. I remember I started this during the pandemic where I was like, oh my gosh, 
we can't go anywhere. I don't know what else to watch. I feel like I've watched everything, everything. and that's not true. There's so much out there. Um, so then, you know, a list of movies to watch, a list of TV shows to watch. And I even have it broken down by kids oh, because smart. certain ones of my kids like certain yeah. things. So it's like, oh, this is something that this kid and I could watch together. Something that this kid and I could, you know, watch together because in the moment, oh my gosh, I can't, like one of my absolute triggers is that click, 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 Trying click, to find click, something click, click. Oh my like, gosh, uh, I can't, I yeah. literally can't. So just a list. Maybe you list your goals, like my 24 and 24 list so that you remember what you're intending and you go back and you have a way to connect with it. I'm going to, lots of ideas there. Here, Debbie, you asked for it. I, I don't know. I, I gave <laughs> at least 20 different ideas of some tools to start with. What I'm going to recommend is start with one. We want to do it all. It's all sparkly. Start with one that's either the most sparkly or that you know is going to give you the most bang for your time and yeah. energy and focus. Decide where you're going to keep it, whether it's going to be a digital tool or a physical tool, and then just notice what it gives you to have started it. That is really the essential first step to creating a palm is start with one thing, decide where, and then just notice what does it give you to have it what works, what doesn't work, and then move on from there. So like everything that I share here at ADHD Friendly, take what works for you, leave the rest behind. If you have questions, this is episode 120. It is a zero episode. So post in the comments. If you have a question, I'd love to hear it. If possible, I'd love to answer it in a future episode. Yeah. So just as a quick recap for episode 120, I talked about how creating an awful book is my celebration. Um, being able to have a way to connect with things that inspire awe in 2024. I'm hoping to have, I don't know, like at least 12 things. Like I'm hoping at least once a month, I'll have something to add to it. And then a list of palm tools that you might consider adding or starting for your personal owner's manual. Again, ADHDfriendly.com. If you want to get the free mini palm to start your personal owner's manual and just remember, like a ship's log, a personal owner's manual can literally help support you to see where you're going and what gets you there so that you're not going off track and getting lost. And then I wanted to share, um, I know this is a long episode, but really quickly, I haven't updated a, a Patty's bookshelf Yay. in a while. So I have two quick book recommendations. The first one is First Lie Wins. This is by Ashley Elston. This was a super fast read. Ooh. It's a spy kind of thriller um, novel. Lots of twists and turns. Kept me guessing. Great story. I did see, I think Hulu, somebody somebody bought the rights. It is because I, I assume I, I do this sometimes where I'm into a book. And I'm like, oh, th this is reading like I can see it. And I'm like, like I bet somebody bought yeah. this. So yeah, um, that's coming, I think in 2025. So Ooh, I think it's Hulu. Um, but it was a really fast book. I think it was a Reese's book club book pick, which I do tend to like her. So I, that's a resource I'm going back to more often, but that was really, really good. And then I just this morning finished Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingslog, Kingsolver, K-I-N-G-S-O-L-V-E-R. I haven't read a book of hers in probably, oh my gosh, like 10, 15 years. Yeah. I thought it was an older book. I, I, everybody is like, oh my gosh, you got to read. I've been hearing about it for a while. So I just thought it's been around forever. It came out in 2022. Oh, it's a fat book. It's like 800 pages. Oh man. Um, but again, I started it on a Friday and today is Wednesday that we're recording this. Oh man, you and went through 10 books. It was really good. Ooh. And I have to say, I read and listened to it when I was walking yeah. or shoveling snow and the audio version was really well done. So it was very sparkly. I really got into the characters with um, whoever was doing the audio. I don't know, but it was really good. Um but really, really, I actually gave it five stars. I don't give many books five stars. I gave First Lie Wins four and a half. Really enjoyed that pace. Um, just was crying at the end of it. It was so well done, really well told. Just like, I feel like a connection to all the characters just really loved it. So I wanted to share those two books from Patty's Bookshelf. So this is my Kevin Kelly, KK, um, Excellent Advice for Living book. Pull out one of his quotes at the end of each episode. And in this one, I am highlighting this quick quote. He says, a vacation plus a disaster equals an adventure. <laughs> oh, and I just love this because it is in one of my um, success, my visual successes um, journals that when I think it was our 17th wedding anniversary, I'm sure my husband 
I don't think he listens to these, but if he did, he'd be like, Patty, that was our blank. <laughs> I think it was around 17. Um, we're we've married coming up on 32 years this year, but 31 right now, to be completely honest, only 31. Um, but it was around our 17th anniversary. We went to Paris. It was my first time mm -hmm. out of the country. I No, it wasn't his first time, but it was my first time. It was both of our first times to Europe. And the flight... It, this was all done on points. Okay. So we sat in coach. It was a triple seven. So it was like three seats, four seats, three seats. We sat in the middle on the four seats and the two middle seats sandwiched in by two complete strangers for the seven and a half, eight hour, whatever it was flight where you like literally can't move. Oh, man. It's completely Just uncomfortable. uncomfortable. And I had a, um, and, and I don't mean this against people from France, I have to say overall, the people that I met in France were lovely and really helpful, but there was a man sitting next to me who was going home, who just didn't seem to respect my space. And he put his feet over underneath my, oh, like the little seat in front of me nice. kind of space. So I had to like put my feet over to my husband. It was the longest, most uncomfortable flight. And then we get to Paris and we're trying to save money because we're on a, we have four small kids at this point mm -hmm. and they're getting diagnosed with ADHD. Like, there was a lot going on. There are right. lots of things going on and we're trying to do this on a budget. So we're trying to walk from the train we took to our hotel and we can't find it. And of course, all of the road signs are written in French, which neither of us speak. Everybody I was lovely when we stopped and asked them for directions. Yeah. So we did not have any experience with people not being tolerant of us being American, speaking English. Everybody was lovely, but we couldn't understand what they were saying. Oh, because it was such a strong accent. Yes. And so they would they would pronounce things in a way that when you're looking at the way it was written, it did not read the way that we would pronounce it. And so it was very confusing. And we're literally carrying all of our luggage through the streets of Paris. And we've you know, flown those seven and a half, eight hours with me, you know, cramped. Yes. Because the, exactly and, and this was a boundary thing, which I did not set. This was totally on me, but it was exhausting. Yeah. It was just a very, very, very long day. And we're walking around carrying all this luggage. And I mean, for miles okay. and not finding our way. We're finally, we're, we start bickering. My husband's walking ahead of me. I'm walking like the five feet behind him. And I just started crying. Cause I was like, we're in Paris. And, I'm just so happy. and then we came across, um, a, a little American, like diner looking place oh. where we went in and we just got a burger and fries and a Coke and it came with ice. And it was like literally one of my favorite memories. Oh, of it. it was all like at the end of the day yeah. because I just couldn't take anything French. Right. I was just done. I was exhausted. Yeah. And it's funny because we laugh about it now. So when I saw this quote, I'm like, it's so true that it was a vacation. It started as, a, oh, and I forget to tell you, we went to the Louvre and realized we forgot our tickets and it was very expensive. We could not afford to buy them again. And we were trying to like call them up and like find and and they were left in the um in the hotel and we couldn't get it was the, the, oh, this big no. thing oh no they were left at home we didn't even have them with us no it wasn't accessible so we were trying to like find the email it was it was so stressful so like everything in paris was going terrible but it ended up being the best vacation but it started off as a disaster and so that quote resonated with me and i think i've had multiple lizzie i don't know if you have like family things where you're like okay that was terrible at the time, but it really did end up being the thing that we talk about yeah. and laugh about the most. So sure. I do think that you do need some, some of that kind of hardship when you, even if it is a vacation and something you look forward to, to turn it into that thing that you always remember. Cause if everything goes great, it doesn't stick out as much. Right. I don't want those, those things, but at the same time, I do appreciate it now that we made it through and we can laugh about it. So that resonated with me. Thank you, Kevin Kelly. That's it for this episode. Remember, take what works for you, leave the rest behind. And if you haven't checked out ADHDfriendly.com for resources to support you to thrive with ADHD, I invite you to do that. That's all for now. Hope to see you next time. Kelly Hope.